It's the shark's natural sense of caution that I'm going to be relying on during this next dive. Because I'm going to take a pot of raw tuna down to the drop-off and feed 20 or 30 of them by hand. Grey reef sharks are instinctively territorial and waste no time responding to my intrusion. By making these surprisingly close passes, they're able to scan me with a range of beautifully adapted senses. Their eyes collect and amplify available light, allowing them to hunt on even the darkest of nights. Their hearing is fine-tuned to the kind of low frequencies given off by wounded or struggling fish. But the sharks will be using much more than just simple eyesight and hearing to dominate this environment. A lateral line of tubes running the length of their body allows the shark to detect subtle changes in water pressure. They can also detect very subtle electromagnetic fields through jelly-filled cavities on the end of their snout. By rattling a metal box, I'm sending out an invitation that's almost impossible to ignore. All the sharks we saw in this dive were female, and that quite surprised us. Because although sexual segregation is common in smaller species of sharks, it's never been observed or documented in grey reefs. It's also worth noting that almost all of these girls were pregnant. They're going to go crazy for this tuna. ladies. Let's hope they remember their table manners. A small red snapper steals the first piece of bait from right under the nose of a more cautious shark. At this point, the grey reef is using her sense of smell to locate the food, while the snapper are using eyesight and agility to grab pieces of fish before the sharks can home in on them. This kind of competition forces the sharks to become much more aggressive in their attempts to secure their share of the food. Feeding frenzies have often been interpreted as evidence that sharks are somehow psychotic hooligans. But to me, it seems obvious that their behavior is simply the understandable response to an incredibly competitive environment.
come on, come on, come on. Yeah, there you go. Much more like it. She came absolutely barreling through those snapper. That's much more confident behavior. We're seeing the sharks accelerate into the picture now, using their size and muscular bulk to just push the opposition aside, and that's how they assert their natural dominance. And it's not just other species that the sharks are in competition with. Because although they'll hunt cooperatively to flush out their prey, once it's in the open, it's every shark for itself. That's a great example of how this shark feeds, swooping in and sucking up its prey, just like a vacuum cleaner. What a beauty! They're coming much closer now. As the scent of fish thickens in the water, their senses become overstimulated to the point where their natural sense of caution is simply overridden. As you can see, it's getting pretty excited down here. They're moving around at high speeds, twisting and turning, trying to grab hold of anything they can. That's exactly what they call this, a feeding frenzy. Oh, <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Well, there you go. They're clearly not worried about my presence anymore. to get a bit uncomfortable and there's a real risk of an accident amidst all this chaos. Might be smarter to back off now. And not a moment too soon as the sharks blitz the box and cover our cameraman in a thick cloud of bait. The sharks start to treat the box just like a real piece of prey, rolling onto their sides and trying to tear off flesh as if it's a real carcass. But amidst the scramble, surprising dexterity as one of them pulls the box upright with her teeth. Within seconds, the banquet is over. What a beautiful display of power and elegance. The closer I get to sharks, the more I'm convinced they're not man's mortal enemy. In fact, I suspect they're not really interested in us at all. But to test this theory and really put my money where my mouth is, I'm going to be dedicating our next episode to the most infamous shark of them all. Ha <laughs> ha